Hello everyone, Turtle Lags here bringing you another Reverse 1999 video. I apologize for being away for so long. I, I have been traveling a lot. I'm currently here in Paris, France. I've been here for about 10 days. I still have four more days left before I fly out to Prague, Czech Republic, which is my next travel destination here in 2024. Part of the reason why I haven't been filming for so long is in addition to traveling, I'm also waiting for my designer to finish my travel channel logo as well as introduction video that I will edit into all my travel videos. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I am creating a new travel channel which I will have all my dedicated travel videos in. I know about maybe two to three weeks ago I had released my part one of my 2023 European travels and I noticed that the viewership was not as as high and I think that part of the reason may be because you guys are more interested in reverse 1999 videos and not necessarily on travel. So for those of you who are also interested in my travel videos, I will let you know maybe in my next video. Uh, basically provide a link to my travel channel and then you can subscribe to that. And then for those of you who are not interested in that, uh, all my subsequent videos for this channel will be dedicated to Reverse 1999. Now today I have a very special video for you all because uh, this is actually going over my top six to eight most favorite teams in Reverse 1999. As someone who, who has all the characters, I have tried many different team combinations. I've been able to max level most of my characters at this point and to be able to play with my favorite characters is something that brings me a lot of joy and it's one of the main reasons why I go out my way to get all the characters as well as show you what the teams are capable of. And it will be some time before I get the rest of the five star and six stars to, to maximum capacity or potential I should say uh, but until then I want to at least show you the teams that I personally run whenever a new limbo comes out and all these teams I believe are capable of clearing any limbo whether it's side one or side two doesn't matter what tricks or immunities the enemy has I think these teams really shine so I'm actually thinking I probably will showcase eight different teams and each of Flatus will be covered at least once. So without further ado, let's begin. The first team that I want to showcase is my favorite mineral team. And for mineral, of course, Eternity is going to be the best mineral DPS until Kalabalna comes out in a couple days. I run my Eternity on Hopscotch, which I believe is the best side cube for her because by running Eternity on this side cube, all her incantations will hit harder. And additionally, when she knocks out the enemies, her ultimate becomes stronger. And Eternity is meant to be played for the long run in the sense that with each round that passes, her insights increases both the leech rate and the uh, the damage output of Eternity. So by the time you get to turns three through five, she ends up hitting pretty hard. And for Eternity, I like running her with Tooth Fairy because Tooth Fairy has two different ways to apply, to uh, increase her crit rate, whether it be the Confusion application via her, her debuff empty gums, but additionally her baby tooth uh, insight allows for enemy team crit resist and crit defense shred. So I think that with Eternity on the crit build, which I'll show you here, this is what I'm running, the crit build. With her crit build, the puzzle pieces grant her 35% crit rate. And then when you combine that with Eternity's innate crit rate, it actually adds up to almost 45%. And when you apply the Confusion debuff along with the Baby Tooth crit, or crit rate, crit resist shred from, from Tooth Fairy, Eternity ends up critting, I would say over a third 
maybe like over 75% of the time, which is, is quite impressive. So, and then in terms of teammates, hands down, even though there's a ton of mineral supports you can choose from, Pickles is, in my opinion, the best partner for Eternity because Pickles is able to increase the party-wide damage output for two turns with his ultimate. In addition, he's very action point friendly with his clarified topic, which basically every time you cast an incantation while under clarified topic, his moxie increases by one. So he oftentimes only needs to attack maximum three times in order for his ultimate to be back up. This also allows him to be one of the few characters to actually, I think maybe the only character to be able to turn to ult consistently without reshuffling your cards. And then I have him on Luxurious Leisure because his ultimate is single target and you will cast his ultimate quite frequently because you will cast his ultimate on turn two if you want to maximize his contribution to the team. So he will ultimate at least two to three times per limbo. And then in terms of side cube, I think Tooth Fairy on the Inquisitive Deer is, is the best choice. Inquisitive Deer allows you to have three different basically two different ways to passively heal uh, your team without casting a, a healing incantation. One way is with the baby tooth triggers every five stacks you heal, but additionally Inquisitive Deer, the, the additional bonus is that whenever Tooth Fairy debuffs the enemy, which she's capable of doing, the ally, basically your teammate with the lowest HP percentage will have their HP heal. Now this allows for you to just focus on dealing damage. You don't ever need to cast your your healing incantation if, if, you're, um, if you have your characters built enough. So let me go ahead and show you this team here. I'm just running X as a cheerleader. I think he has such a cool skin. Dental checkup. All right. So what I always do is is I will move, I will move the pickles incantation once, and then I will cast the puppy agreed with you. cast two incantations. This will bring his moxie to maximum, so that you can turn to a uh, turn to ultimate. Okay, so what I think I will do next, let's go ahead and apply Confusion, that way the ultimate hopefully will crit. Um, and then, hmm. So I got a couple options here. I, I'm gonna cast this healing incantation that way that those cards fuse. Okay, well, uh, that add, the add drew, basically drew aggro, but it's okay. So now that we have the ultimate up, Pickle's ultimate doing party-wide damage increase, I want to make this second turn really count, so I'm going to just go all-out attacks. So I see a great combination right here, so let's do that. And you'll notice how frequently Eternity crits. Hey! My child, here's something fun for you. Yeah. I'm pretty confident with her ability to crit. So oh, and the cards landed perfectly. So I think what I'll do is do that. Build, build more clarified topics, I think, is... Hmm. Bloody prom! I'm actually kind of tempted to get the ult up again, so let's just do... The puppy agreed with your decision. Bloody prom. Yeah, I'm gonna get Pickle's the ultimate ocean back dried up. And I'm alone again. <laughs> That's a lot of crits. It's alright. Good. Sempre caro mi fu questermo cole. Oh. 
No worries. Take it easy. Please. Actually, what I could have done if I really wanted to... I, I, sometimes I do my turn so quickly that I forget to level up my incantations. I could have fused them there. But it's okay, Pickles knocked her out. Okay, so that is my mineral team, and I'll go ahead and show you. Now, I know my Pickles is P5, but uh, I think even if my Pickles was P1, the rotation would be the same, and Eternity would probably do more damage than my Pickles. So that is my mineral, my favorite mineral team. The second team I want to showcase is one of my most favorite star teams, which is Charlie, Regulus, and Tooth Fairy. I think of all the Aflatuses that I've run, I think the Star Aflatus is the one that I experimented with the most just because we have so many star DPSs and star DPSs to choose from, whether it be, you know, Charlie or Lilia or Regulus. We even have like Blani and uh, Matilda even. There's, there's many different choices. I think that this this team right here of Charlie, Regulus, and Tooth Fairy, in my opinion, is the strongest star of Lattice team that you can run in Reverse 1999 currently, and probably for the foreseeable future from the updates I see. And the reason is because, well, there's a couple reasons. One is that Tooth Fairy has incredible synergy with Regulus. Regulus has Restless Heart, which makes it so that any crit rate overflow converts to crit damage. So when you're casting her incantations under Restless Heart, especially her ultimate, it's pretty ridiculous how much damage you can do. And then additionally, Regulus is action point friendly because with Restless Heart, it encourages you to not act for a round, which actually is perfectly fine because a lot of times you just want to get Charlie to deal as much damage as possible, get Charlie's ultimate up. Now, uh, and then for Regulus, I do like her on the Thunderous Applause. At this point, you know, with uh, Restless Heart, Thunderous Applause, the extra crit rate, as well as you know, dealing additional crit damage. It just makes Regulus hit so hard, and it's quite amazing. And then, of course, I still have my Tooth Fairy on Inquisitive Deer. I still think that's the best choice. And then for Charlie, I think you could either run her on Hopscotch or Brave New World. I like Hopscotch more just because I, I love being able to deal more damage with her incantations right from the start. And of all the... The characters, I think Charlie will probably knock out more. I mean, Regulus hits pretty hard too, but you can kind of control that because Regulus, typically with the riot and roll from her ultimate, you want to cast that at the end. So you can pick up some quick knockouts first with Charlie if you'd like to take advantage of Hopscotch's ultimate might increase. So this is the team that I like to run when I'm... Uh, when I'm fighting a star aflatus weak limbo so right off the bat i'm gonna just um focus on charlie and tooth fairy i do want to get charlie's ultimate up as quick as possible so let's go ahead and do it this way Wow, okay, <laughs> that's that's kind of, normally my runs aren't that lucky, but. Okay, and then what I'll do, is we'll do that, this, this shall be my only act. and then I wanna really focus down the Stop boss, so let's do that. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, you drew aggro, I forgot. Thy ending is destined. Uh. Pretty good damage. Left hands up. My Charlie's P5. I think a lot of content creators, they have P5 Charlies now. And some of you may have P3 Charlie at this point. So I think this is very realistic. Okay. So what do I want to do here? I shall take thy words. Relax. Let the show... Begin. Foolish. It's all right. 
I smell the scent of Wow, meat. that did so much. And we're gonna have the ultimate up again. I think this is gonna be a uh, turn four clear. I was actually not expecting that. Okay. No worries. This shall be my only act. Actually, if I really want to guarantee it, I should probably do this. Relax. Shall be my only They're just little games. Please, don't resist. Thy ending is destined. That is so much damage. Left hands up. Now right hands. It's all right. Wow, that's so scary, guys. Ha! That's what you've got. Huh? Yeah. I'm wow, sorry. that's insane. Okay, so that's that's my most favorite star of Gladys team. Pretty ridiculous, right? Okay, so now on to the Beast of Flatus. I would say Melania, this Melania team is my favorite Beast of Flatus team currently. I know I have pic pickles sprinkled in there, but this is my favorite team to run. Basically, I have my Melania on Luxurious Leisure, of course, because you, you want to spam her ultimates to increase the power of her ultimates. I like running Pickles on Hopscotch in this particular case just because he. Uh, I like to have his incantations do more damage, and sometimes my Pickles ends up knocking out the enemy, so being able to increase the ultimate is quite nice. And then Medicine Pocket on, on Inquisitive Deer, I think, is a, a very good choice. So let's go ahead and try this team out. Let's kill time together! Now I know some of you may be saying that Melania is her value may have decreased a little bit because for Limbo 6-2 right now removing the enemy's moxie doesn't matter and actually I don't think you can even remove their moxie but I would argue that Melania with the exception of that particular case is fairly universal as a DPS just because most of the time the enemy will be relying on their moxie to cast their ultimates. So I always start with the rotation by casting Pickle's ultimate. And actually, sometimes I kind of wonder if I should run Luxurious Leisure on Pickles. Because sometimes my Pickles does more ultimates than my, my uh, Melania, but it's alright. Plan A. A mice party. Sempre caro mi fu questermo cole. Okay. So I think Moxie stealing this guy Andy. would make a lot of sense. And then. So I'm gonna reshuffle. I want to get Pickles ultimate up. Okay. The show's on, hounds. The puppy agreed with your decision. Time waits for no one. Even for a great thing. So long lives this, and this gives power to thee. I've come to realize that I think Pickles and Regulus are my most favorite supports. 
Three, two, one, down. A mice pod. Ah. Oh, beautiful. Ow! Sterilize. The show's on, Handy. Get out of here. Time waits for no one, even for a great thief. So that was a turn six clear. And that was a P0 Milani. The puppy is fleeing the scene at its maximum speed. Very nice. So that is one of my favorite Beast of Lattice teams. All right. The fourth team that I want to showcase is another Beast of Lattice team, this time starring Centurion instead of Melania. I think there is a strong case to be made that there will be times when you will want to run Centurion over Melania, particularly if you run into a situation where you're facing a boss that doesn't have any moxie to steal, or maybe their ultimate doesn't require moxie in order to cast. And in that particular case, it makes a lot of sense to focus on raw damage. Maybe you will also face an enemy team that has a bunch of mobs like a bunch of different ads uh, like in this fight that we're about to do so being able to hit multiple targets can be quite useful i still think pickles is the best partner for centurion just because you do want to have your dps cast as many incantations as possible and pickles can keep up by also generating moxie for himself so he is hitting hard with his ultimates let me go ahead and show this to you. One thing you'll probably notice is that I switched the side cubes here. This time, typically pickles whenever possible, I will run luxurious leisure on him. And then for Centurion, I do think hands down, especially Centurion, that Hopscotch is the best for her, just because Hopscotch is able to increase the incantation might and You'll notice with the way that I play Centurion, there's a lot of times where I will cast more in, more of her incantations even though her ultimate is up. The puppy wishes to come along. Okay, so same standard rotation. The puppy Get agreed Pickles with your decision. Up. It's alright. It's alright. Ultimate is up. So long lives this, and this gives power to thee. Okay. And the cool thing about Centurion is she has the ability to increase Moxie for herself too, which is really nice. Oh, they see this. Yeah, I know. And I know some of you guys may be wondering, well, you're hardly using your healer, so shouldn't you run Tooth Fairy on this side? And I would agree with that, but realistically, you're going to run Tooth Fairy on the other side. So whenever I'm running Beast of Flatus, I, I like to have Medicine Pocket here. I think Medicine Pocket works just fine. Okay, so I do you want to get the ultimate up? Wear gloves. And I think this is an example where Medicine Pocket can serve just fine because this attack makes Centurion hit harder. Okay, so we finally have Centurion's ultimate up, but instead of casting the ultimate, I'm going to reshuffle for some incantations. Perfect. Okay, so we can do this, this, and... And this. Ta da! Time for a special massage. What? You still don't recognize me? What about now? I know the moon, and this is an alien city. Hmm. Okay, so in this particular case, I think I probably would sterilize. Yeah, I know. Do this. Now. So I'm hoping that this will Get finish of off the opponent. Uh -oh. 
maybe I could have... Oh, I probably should have cast a debuff before the ultimate. Ooh, very close. Okay. Yeah, I played that wrong. But it's okay, it kind of illustrates my point. The puppy agreed with your decision. So at this point, it doesn't matter. Wear gloves. I guess if you played this. Sterilize. The puppy agreed with your decision. Yeah, I know. Get out of here. Oh, maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Okay. So that was a uh, six turn clear with Centurion. I really like this team as well, very solid. Okay, this is one of my most favorite Plant of Lattice teams. This would be Jessica, Bee Corn Bloom, and Sotha Bee. I think that Jessica and Sotha Bee are basically a core. You should run them together because Sotha Bee's poison application enables the entirety of Jessica's kit, whether it be with the white blinky, you know, if the target's afflicted with poison, deals additional 40% reality damage. You want to get three stacks of poison on the enemy as much as possible, at least three stacks if you can. And then with the ultimate, same thing here. Uh, yeah, the enemies on stats down deals more damage. The, the ultimate, you know, inflicts poison on, on the enemies. So Jessica has a little bit of poison application there. And, uh, okay, yeah, so that's Jessica. Jessica, I like to run on Blasphemer of the Night. I do think this is the best side cube for her especially since you will be running Jessica with Sotha Bee. So the enemy will always have two or more negative status downs. And so Jessica will hit pretty hard with her incantations, which is quite nice. Sotha Bee will be on Inquisitive Deer. I think this makes a lot of sense. There are many scenarios which you will almost never run a healing incantation from Sotha Bee. It's just purely poison application. And you will see from my rotations, I always try to apply poison whenever I can. That's a top priority. And then the support role, you know, the beauty is that plant has so many great supports. My One of my most favorite is Bee Corn Bloom. I think Bee Corn Bloom has especially great synergy with Jessica just because Beacorn Bloom really shines with the Luxurious Leisure. Her ultimate hits so freaking hard. And then on top of that, uh, you know, they're not fighting for side cube, so you will be able to run Luxurious Leisure on Beacorn Bloom with this team. Additionally, Beacorn Bloom applies Defense Shred and um, increased damage taken with her Prying Ears. And then the ultimate seals the enemy seals the enemy for three turns making it so that that enemy cannot cast their ultimate so this allows you to basically interrupt the enemy the opponent that way you're able to do more of what you want to do which is to just fire off all the all those damage incantations so let me go ahead and show case this team to you i think despite it being the weak of flattest team i think this had one of the fastest clears let's try it Perfect. So this is one of those rare situations where, or in my case, I always try to fuse cards whenever I can in order to to get the ultimate up faster. But in Sothebi's case, I hardly cast her ultimate until the very end when I just want to do one final, you know, kabam, you know, on the enemy. So I'll cast oh, two. Hey. This is going to be two oh, stacks God. of poison right there, and then let's just. Let's just do damage. Be serious. Stay focused. Ah, oh, it seems to be mixed up. Ah, oh, it seems to be mixed up. It's all right. It should be fine, right? And you, you know how tanky this boss is. So to be able to do 5k, I think this is the first DPS to, to do that. Okay, so we have a couple options here. So always I like oh, to please. apply poison whenever I can. And then we'll do Whose that. Heart is beating so loud? Okay. Let's I hear do it that way. I the nice thing about this team is that I, I can either uh, get my Beacorn Bloom's ultimate up or my Jessica's ultimate up. Both will benefit. 
So we got the ultimate up there, and then I'm going to just do this. Stay focused. That's cradle. Go, go. It's a lot of damage. So long lives this, and this gives power to thee. Sempre caro mi fu questermo cole. Hmm. Okay, that's a little annoying, but. Whose heart is beating so loud? Actually, I do want to get my ultimate up, so. We should listen to what Move people say. Be serious, stay focused. Secrets always hide in careless words. Listen carefully. It's all right. Not lightning. It's all right. Go, go! this time oh don't worry i have prepared it all i have prepared it all not with lightning it's all right sempre caro mi fu questermo cole premia sereno intenso ad infinito what's this Okay, six. So six turn clear. Come on, stand up. There's one I had a faster on. clear before. I'm not sure what went wrong there, but anyways, so that's one of the pla plant of flattest teams that I enjoy. Okay, here's another of my favorite plant of flattest teams. This time switching Beekorn Bloom with Anna and Lee. This one has amazing synergy as well because Anna and Lee, in addition to to buffing your damage output, she mitigates damage and she empowers incantation, which levels up a random incantation of your party. And then on top of all that, she has the ability to daze. And I think in some ways this provides even more flexibility with this team because you'll have more ways to interrupt the enemy. You just basically make the enemy not do anything. So quite powerful. Wow, so many things that I haven't seen. What's that? What's this? Off your legs. I triple the ingredients this time. I triple the ingredients this time. Now the lightning. Ah. Easy, da. Be serious. Stay focused. Ha! What's that? Move your legs. Copy that. I tripled the ingredients this That's time. All right. Easy, da. Just like in the train. What's this? Crackers and fireworks. Oh, don't worry. I have prepared it all. I have prepared it all. 
I just realized I'm playing the game and I'm not saying anything. It should be fine, right? Okay, here I think it would make sense to reshuffle. So I don't want to cast Sotheby's ultimate because I want to keep the poison stacks. Okay, and I think this is probably the turn I would cast all the ultimates. So as you can see, you know, there's a lot of hype for characters like Jessica and, yeah, Jessica, basically. But you notice how how close these teams are in terms of doing clears. I mean, we even saw, like, Charlie do the fastest clear so far. Jessica teams are amazing, but I think that uh, they're not... Jessica teams are not so broken that they outpace say beast of flatus teams as you saw with my melania team and my centurion team they're able to keep up with jessica i mean my jessica's p5 and my melania's p0 but my melania ended up still clearing in just as many turns turns as jessica okay so the last team that i want to showcase is another plant of flatus team this would be jessica drubis and sotheby now what i like about this team is that drubis she has two different ways to lock down the enemy via her petrification it could either be via a level two level two wind into the woods which petrifies and then her ultimate also petrifies. So you can still do the same thing where you're focusing on casting poison application incantation from Sotheby and then doing a ton of damage with your Jessica. And then when you finally have more Druvis cards, then you can start fusing cards and in a way kind of be AP generous there where really you're just fusing cards and petrifying whenever you need to and then when the ultimate's ready then you petrify again so it's it's a pretty cool team combination not to mention that especially if you're going against enemies that hit a little bit harder the circle of life leech rate that basically all your plant units leech 10 percent of the the damage that you're dealing to the enemy i think that can be quite quite useful uh, in self-sustaining and making so making it so that you really never need to heal with Sotheby. So, uh, and I'm very excited to showcase this because I finally have Druvis level 60 Resonate 10 on her uh, Brave New World Psy Cube. There is an argument to actually run her on Hopscotch, but I think that because I'm not going to attack with her very often, it, it makes more sense to make her ultimate stronger. So let's go ahead and showcase this one here. All right, so let's do this. So I always poison first and then cast all of Jessica's attack incantations. Oh, very nice. Okay, so what I will end up doing here, it's funny how this lines up. So Petrify, if I'm not mistaken, is on, it will only be dispelled if, yeah, you do reality damage, and we're not going to do reality damage here. So I can safely, oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, Druvis's damage is not the best, but still quite useful. And you just gotta be careful about the order in which you cast the incantations. 
You don't want to dispel your own petrify. Ooh, okay, interesting. I'm trying to remember what their alternates do. So this just deals more damage. I don't care too much about that. But the taunting aspect of this is really annoying. So I think it makes sense to want to petrify this person. So what I'll do, get all my reality attacks out first. Hmm, actually, you know what? Let's reshuffle. Yeah, okay, This I like this more, so we'll do this, and then get Jessica's ultimate up, and then petrify this guy. So you, as you can see, even though the other two units are reality units, Drubus is able to provide a lot of value. And we don't take we don't care about taking a ton of damage because of Circle of Life. We'll, we'll get the the HP back. I wonder if this is enough enough damage. Let's see. Okay, it's looking like this might be a five turn clear. Depends on how much Sothebi does. I mean, my Sothebi is P4, so this is probably unrealistic, but okay, turn five clear. So that's pretty cool, right? You can, I think some people may argue that, oh, Drubus, she doesn't buff your damage output, so she's not going to be great. But as you saw right here, Drubus was petrifying constantly, keeping the enemy from doing combat tricks. And I think this Limbo is a fantastic showcase because they provide a lot of buffs and debuffs that would have potentially slowed us down around. So pretty nice. I didn't have any trouble with the rotation there. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that showcase of my top seven favorite teams to run in reverse 1999. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the, in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.